Hello, this is Vern, and on today's episode, I'm going to share with you where the awesome, conscious, masculine guy that you're looking for is actually hiding. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to your GreatLifeTV.com, a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, heart-centered, successful women like you how you can attract the kind of quality man that you want and stop wasting your time with guys who can't commit. As a result of stepping into the most alive feminine version of yourself, no need to play gimmicks, manipulate, or play tricks of any kind. Now, I'm gonna share with you right now a truth that you have not been able to see so far. You know sometimes you maybe go to sleep at night and you're, you're feeling hurt, uh, you're not finding the kind of man that you want. I'm, I'm sharing with you right now that the kind of man you want is also looking for you. Here's the problem, he's not finding you. And the reason why he's not finding you is because there's seven things that you're doing, there's seven places that you're hiding, there's seven obstacles that are preventing him from connecting and sharing his heart with you. So I'm gonna share them with you one by one. The first one, the first place the guy that you want is hiding is in the smile that you are not sharing. So let me clarify this. You enter a space, the guy sees you from a distance, he wants to engage with you, he's looking for your smile, you don't smile. He starts thinking, well, maybe she's with someone, maybe she's not interested in me, maybe she's gonna reject me, he doesn't approach you, and then the whole thing goes to waste, right? So the first place the guy isn't finding you, is in the smile that you're f failing to generously share with him and the world. The second place that the guy that you want is hiding, and the reason why he's not finding you is due to the eye contact you're failing to hold. He connects with you, he sees you, your eyes cross paths, and then you look down, or you look away, or you act disinterested, because you don't want to appear vulnerable and share with him in any way that you like him as well. So he gets a clear message. It's like a little punch in the gut, saying, ah, not interested in you. So when he feels that, same thing, he doesn't approach you, he doesn't connect and then he can't find you, he can't connect with you. Third place that the guy that you want isn't finding you, and part of the reason why he's not connecting with you is maybe there's a, a few events, maybe there's a meetup that you're too tired or too disillusioned to attend. There's a party, there's an art gallery, there's a gathering of souls that you're feeling too tired to show up for, and when you're not showing up for that, He's basically the solution saying, man, like, where is this woman that I'm looking for right now? Well, she's in her apartment watching Netflix. <laughs> That's where she's at. Number four is in the line at the coffee shop right behind you when you're browsing through your emails and liking pictures in Instagram and Facebook and, and you're not open to engage your energy with him and he's trying to find a space in and you're still looking at your phone intently because you don't want to connect with the world, because it's you don't want to be rejected, because you're just used to doing that thing time and time again. So your phone is part of the reason the guy that you want isn't finding you these days. Number five, fifth place that the guy that you want is not finding you is in the judgment that you have about him before you even get a chance to connect with him. So here's this cool guy, gets out of a fancy car, dressed well, and instead of saying, hmm, maybe he's interesting, you have a judgment like, oh, look at this douchebag. I wonder what he stole to get what he has, or I wonder who he's trying to impress. If instead of opening up the possibility of connecting, you're judging him, the judgment you have about him is like a shield giant shield that's preventing him from approaching you, you from connecting with them, and then the magic isn't happening. Sixth place that he's not finding you is in the chemistry that you are not patient enough to see develop. So what does that mean? That means that you've been led to believe a lie. You've been watching movies and reading Harlequin romance novels that all share with you that the moment, the first second, your ice paths, then the ocean parts in half and the angels sing and, uh, and your heart explodes and he feels exactly the same way. And you should know the first second that you connect with him that he's the one and only for you forever. If you buy into that bullshit, the problem is that 
although that might be true some of the time, there's probably more of the time where that's not true and you're not able to connect with them because you're not patient enough to see that chemistry develop and get stronger and stronger with each date. So you connect with them, you don't feel that ocean's parting and you say, well, he's not obviously not the one because I should know the first second. I always know the first second. Well, first of all, if that I should know the first second were true, you would have found your guy already. So I, I call a little BS on that hypothesis. So if your hypothesis, I know the first second, hasn't worked out for you, I urge you to adopt a new one, which means not that you should fall for a guy that you're not attracted to, don't feel chemistry with, but that chemistry can sometimes take time, and chemistry that takes time can be a stronger foundation than something that just explosively happens once and then gets gone. Seventh place is not finding you is in the cynicism that you're holding about your life, about men, about the world, about the state of connection between men and women as you look into the future. Because when you have that, imagine that you're wearing sunglasses covered in dog shit, okay? You dip your sunglasses in dog shit and you put them on. And then you're looking at the world with a maybe brownish tint, thinking that everything around you is brownish in color. Well, it doesn't mean that it's brownish in color, it just means that's the way you're looking at life. When you look at life with a cynical, I give up view at an early age, you can see the truth behind what's happening and you close off to opportunities and you close off to men and you close off to love who's knocking at your door but you're too busy, too disillusioned, too sad or too impatient to see through. Hope this reversing situation uh, allows you to see that the guy might be closer than you think and further away than you're showing up for. <laughs> Thank you so much for connecting with me. If this is meaningful to you in any way, I'm gonna ask you right now to do three things. Click like on this video or a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and on the first link in the description of this video, I decided to create a free masterclass to share with you step-by-step step how you can take these concepts further and get the kind of relationship you want. All you do is click on the first link, enter your name and email, and you'll be redirected to the free masterclass right away. If you want some hand-holding, help, and accountability, second link in the description of this video will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much for showing up, for allowing me into your home and your heart. And as always, I challenge you to live a full, a conscious life.